Kule, and I hope you're having a most marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. Well, today's video is one of those, I never thought about that. And now I need to think about that. And what I'm talking about is, is it true that white Americans are afraid to compete on an even playing field? Now, you've probably never thought about that before, but now is the time to think about it. That's what they're saying. That's what a lot of people are saying. I'm like Donald Trump now. That's what a lot of people are saying. A lot of people are saying that they are afraid to compete on a level playing field. Now, we know that every accomplishment that black Americans have made in this country since the very beginning, they were made on an uneven playing field. Now, we know that. So we can just put that out there right now. When the discoveries are made by people who graduated from HBCUs, they were not, they were not playing on a level playing field. When enslaved people invented things, those inventions were not made on a level playing field. But the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. So a lot of things that they invented were out of necessity because the workload was so heavy that they decided it's got to be a faster, a better way to do this. And so out of necessity, they did those inventions, but they were not on a level playing field. Now, what brought this subject to the forefront for me is this whole thing about DEI being under siege, diversity, equity, and inclusion all over the South and really all over the country with these Republicans, they're trying to do away with DEI. They don't want diversity, equality, or inclusion. Now, why would that be the case? Other than that, they don't want to compete. They've been getting away all this time with no competition, saying that you're not qualified you didn't make a high enough score on the test, or you're incompetent. In the meantime, black people and other groups too are outperforming them. So what are they saying now? Well, we don't want any diversity. We don't need any equity. We don't need any inclusion. So that means they can now say, you're black, so you're just a, you're just a diversity hire, and that's against the law now. So that's why the question is coming up, are they afraid to compete on a level playing field? I came across this article from the Milwaukee Independent and it's from September 2nd, 2020. And it says, white America's greatest fear, a level playing field. And they have a picture of six black baseball players. And this was the beginning of the heartbreak for white America because they had convinced themselves that black people can't compete with them in any area. And the baseball players showed them they were wrong. And they've been shown wrong ever since, but they've never accepted it. I'm gonna share bits and pieces of this article because it really does get to the heart of what we're dealing with in America. It says, white society created an unlevel playing field and have maintained it for so long that it feels normal. When I hear white people shouting about their rights, I don't hear about the rights of other people who are not in their exclusive club. Now this is absolutely true. One of the clearest examples of how this unlevel playing field plays out and exposes white fear of competition is in the history of Major League Baseball. The history of the sport in the late 19th and 20th century is a microcosm of American life. The creation of an exclusive club for white people and the ramifications of what happened 
when that club is finally opened up to non-whites shows what happens when the playing field is shifted to be a little bit less unlevel. And what he's saying is that when Major League Baseball finally opened up, that was the first real test of integration of black men and white men playing on a level playing field. And not only did the black players show that they could play as well as the white players, they showed they could play better. And white people have been afraid of that level playing field ever since. So this article goes on to talk about how from the very beginning, Major League Baseball was segregated. And every time a black player came in and tried to integrate the sport, something happened and he was kicked out. And this was reinforced by the Jim Crow laws. And he says, this aspect of Jim Crow is rarely talked about. These laws, policies, and practices for decades excluded blacks and other people of color from having access to the American dream. There was no American dream for people of color. It was an American nightmare. Getting work, becoming homeowners, voting, getting a quality education were just a few things whites took for granted but denied to people of color, especially black people. Major League Baseball began in 1869. From 1869 to 1947, they would not let black men play baseball. So for 78 years, white players dominated the game and they thought that they were superior players until they integrated Major League Baseball and found out. They messed around and found out. The black players who played during the integration phase from 1947 to 1959 set a standard of success that the white players and owners had denied them. Jackie Robinson, Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, Roberto Clemente, Ernie Banks, Bob Gibson, and Frank Robinson are all in the Baseball Hall of Fame, okay? They are considered all-time great players. So the article is saying that while white people will tell you that they are superior, that you're not qualified to do what they can do, they don't want it put to the test. Just as black Americans have been successful in baseball, they were also successful in other professional sports like basketball and football, which finally opened its doors to non-white players. When the playing field is leveled, we see the results. The author says, I think much of what we see in discriminatory treatment of people of color across the nation's history is related to this fear of competition, not just a desire to keep opportunities just for whites. Another place where this fear of competition is clear is in the American education system. Keeping enslaved and free black people illiterate was designed to ensure they could not compete freely with whites. Centuries of an unlevel playing field created by whites are the reason they are, as a group, so far ahead of non-whites in this country. Meager attempts to mitigate this, like affirmative action, integration of schools, voting rights laws, civil rights laws, and open housing laws, have been fought tooth and nail by whites afraid of the consequences of no longer having a built-in advantage. Closing our borders to mostly non-white countries is another example of the fear of competition. The writer ends this article with a quote. It says, I know what the world has done to my brother and how narrowly he has survived it. And I know which is much worse and this is the crime of which I accuse my country and countrymen and for which neither I nor time nor history will ever forgive them that they have destroyed and are destroying hundreds 
of thousands of lives and do not know it and do not want to know. And this is a passage from James Baldwin's novel, The Fire Next Time. This article is written by Reggie Jackson, who is an award-winning senior columnist for the Milwaukee Independent. He writes about a range of African-American issues. He is also co-founder of Nurturing Diversity Partners, which consults with organizations about equity and inclusion. And that's no surprise. So I began with the question, is it true that white Americans are afraid to compete on an even playing field? We know they are. The question is, how do we deal with it? How do we deal with it? I don't have the answer other than to say that you have to be the best that you can be. Our foreparents said it differently. You have to be twice as good. Is that fair? No, it is not. And I would even push back on that a little bit. I'm not sure you have to be twice as good. I just think you have to be good. In the environment that we live in, with so many people trying to get out of doing anything, if you put effort into doing something and being good at it, I don't think you have anything to worry about. If you're good at what you do, you don't have to worry about competition. Okay, y'all, let me know what you think about this video. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.